Now to drugs in disguise. The war on drugs is hitting closer to home and parents and caregivers need to hear this warning. For the first time, agents who work to keep drugs off the streets and away from our kids are letting us behind locked doors to show you just how bad the problem has become, revealing how drug dealers are up to new tricks and what federal crime fighters are doing about it. News for Jack's reporter Eric Avedan was recently given exclusive access to very few places that um, places that very few people get a chance to go, Eric. Yeah, it was a very interesting experience. Now, to show you the drugs in disguise, I was allowed access inside the lab of the Drug Enforcement Administration. I have to say that for security reasons, I can't say where the lab is located, but I can tell you once inside, I saw millions of dollars worth of cocaine heroin, meth, and fentanyl. While these bales and bags of seized narcotics trace back to drug cartels and smugglers, uh, these are the same drugs that dealers want to bring into our neighborhoods, fueling violence, ru ruining families, and ending lives. Inside this DEA lab is where seized narcotics are stored, tested, and processed as evidence. And DEA scientists are uncovering new smuggling techniques drug cartels are using. Associate Lab Director Agnes Winokur says the newest trick is to hide crystal meth in gallons of paint. What we have to do then is extract the methamphetamine from all these different types of chemicals that they try to mix it in. How difficult is that? It's uh, depending on the, for example, this was in paint, it can be a little bit more challenging than just uh, methamphetamine in powder. When crystal meth mixed with chemicals and paint, the combination can cause the container to collapse over time. So scientists have to work quickly to analyze the samples before their evidence is ruined. Another trick scientists have found, smuggling drugs in concrete, even aluminum metal. Somehow they pay, play with the chemical properties of the, of the actual drug and then of whatever uh, matrix they're trying to conceal it in so that it's able to mixed together so that if you see like a piece of aluminum, you wouldn't know that there's drugs in there. It's important to test the drugs and analyze the samples. That's how they discovered poly drugs. When we were analyzing it, it wouldn't be uh, surprising to find six, seven different drugs. Those taking the drugs may think they're getting one thing, but really taking a potentially deadly mix in one hit. And take a look at this large bag of colorful tablets. Someone might think they're taking ecstasy, but scientists found out it's actually meth in disguise. And this is fentanyl disguised as hard candy that looks like broken pieces of a cherry Jolly Rancher. And they really did look like candy. Obviously, they're trying to bring in the younger, uh, the, the younger population. Maria Lopez is a DEA senior forensic chemist. She uses this computerized machine to determine purity of a specific narcotic and how many drugs have been mixed with it. While we can't show the computer screen examining this particular sample because it's part of an open criminal case, we can confirm that every time it detects specific drugs, the digital meter on the screen will spike. Mostly the cases for cocaine in between 70s and 80s, I would say for meth, we have like 99 to 100% purity. The DEA says meth with a purity level that high comes from drug cartel super labs in Mexico. When Lopez unwrapped this brick cocaine, she noticed it had an impression of the word diesel. It's her job to alert the research department because diesel is a brand of cocaine produced by a specific cartel. It was part of a DEA seizure that included more than 600 kilos of cocaine with a street value of more than $20 million. Mostly the cases that I receive are cocaine. And this is where their job can become more dangerous because cocaine and the deadly fentanyl can look identical, especially when it's a powder. This small bag of white powdery substance came in believed to be cocaine. However, it hasn't been analyzed yet, which means in reality, this could potentially be pure fentanyl. I see cases that have the whole brick, like a kilo from cocaine, and it's just pure fentanyl. Even a small amount of fentanyl can be deadly, so scientists wear protective gear and take samples in this enclosed glass area where there is no air circulation to blow fentanyl particles around. And in case someone is accidentally exposed, there is a supply of naloxone injections available to rapidly reverse a fentanyl overdose. And just when you thought it couldn't get any scarier, scientists have recently received drugs made up of unknown substances so new they can't be identified in a field test during a drug bust. We just don't know what they are because these, these synthetic type of samples are constantly being tweaked. As soon as we identify them, as soon as we share them with the community, you know, as soon as law enforcement starts taking them off the streets, uh, now they have a new one. For the people working in this lab, figuring out what's actually in the drug seized by agents is always personal. And that information is so critical to figure out what is affecting our communities, what's causing you know, our neighbors, our relatives to be inflicted by these very dangerous drugs 
So it takes heart. It takes heart. You, you have to care. Now, once those drugs you saw are analyzed, scientists write up a report about their findings, and then those drugs are incinerated. Also, I want to point out that scientists at the lab say a fairly new designer stimulant called Eudolone is popping up on the streets in Florida. It's a stimulant which can create a sense of euphoria. But Janice and Tarek, if a person takes too much of it, it could cause some major damage. Mm. Sarah, you've been covering these kind of drug busts and DEA uh, efforts for years. What surprised you most about your visit to the lab? I'm going to tell you the most surprising thing I saw was the fact that I looked at a bag that I thought was candy was actually the deadly fentanyl. And if myself as an adult can look at that and see that and think that it's candy, you can only imagine what a child would do thinking, oh, it's harmless, right. something that could just kill them like that. Right. Great hey. story, Eric. Thank you, Eric.